the intensity goes down every second because it's actually shortening in length moving away from the detector uh, towards z axis so as a result of this relaxation we get the fid which is this decaying signal and it's a time domain signal because with time it is decaying in intensity it is lowering in intensity and we have to convert this into a more readable understandable signal so we have to apply a, a mathematical operation that we call the fourier transform to convert it into a frequency domain signal right but we are actually talking about the whole molecule and in molecule you can have different types of protons for example we have this ester so you can see that we have in total eight hydrogens there are eight hydrogens in how many sets can you divide these eight hydrogens or how many different types of frequencies you can see in this molecule Three. There are three types of hydrogens. These three hydrogens have the same Larmor frequencies. These two hydrogens have the same Larmor frequencies but different from these three. And these three have the same Larmor frequencies among each other but different from these five. So we can divide these eight hydrogens into three sets uh, depending upon their Larmor frequencies or resonance frequencies. So we have actually three different frequencies and each of these hydrogens or each of these different types of hydrogens will give you a different FID. Say for mu1 you have this FID, for mu2 you have this FID, for mu3 you have this FID. The difference between these FIDs is the decaying time. So each of these different types of hydrogens, they take a different time to go back from xy plane towards z axis. In other words, they all have a different relaxation time. Those nuclei which decay faster will have a shorter FID. Those nuclei which take longer to go back towards z axis, they will have a slightly longer FID. The difference between these three is that they have different Larmor frequencies and their FIDs are also different. And that is why we give a certain amount of relaxation delay between two pulses so as to allow all the nuclei to reach back at Z axis before we give another pulse. So what we have as a result is an FID complex signal. All these FIDs that we saw in this slide, these are stacked one upon each other and that is why we cannot uh, extract more information, right? So what Fourier transform does is that from this complex signal, it separates out all the frequencies. How many frequencies we have? Three. But in this complex FID, we cannot differentiate between these three frequencies. So what Fourier transform does is that it separates out all the frequencies mu1, mu2, mu3 or maybe higher in any molecule and converts them into a frequency domain spectrum. So from a time domain signal we go towards a frequency domain signal but that frequency domain spectrum will have all the frequencies separated. It's not like this complex FID set. It will have separate frequencies and that is why you see separate signals for each of these different types of hydrogens. So in this molecule, how many signals can you expect? Three signals for the proton. You can expect three signals of proton in this molecule and you will get three signals. Because Fourier transformation has separated out all these frequencies and converted them into a frequency domain spectrum.
So here you see this FID. This is how it looks like, real FID. This is a real FID uh, from one of uh, the molecules that I have. And uh, it's a time domain signal. You can see here, if you can see it, uh, this is in seconds, right? So this is 0 0.05 seconds, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.30, 0 0.4, and so on. So this FID comes down to zero at around 0 0.75 seconds. Here we have maximum signal. And this FID is a stack FID. It's a composite signal that contains the frequencies of all the different types of hydrogens that are present in this molecule. And that is why we convert this time domain spectrum into a frequency domain spectrum. Now this is the frequency domain spectrum of this FID. So when you convert it through Fourier transform, it looks like this. And now you see here the frequency scale. It's not a time scale. This here is a time scale in seconds. But this is a frequency scale which has been converted into PTM that we will discuss later on. But it's actually frequency scale and this shows the intensity of these signals. So from the number of signals that you see here, you can tell or you can determine the number of different types of hydrogens that are present or the number of different uh, types of Lamu frequencies present in this molecule. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So we have 10 different types of hydrogens or we have hydrogens with 10 different Lama frequencies. Some of them have frequencies in this range, some have frequencies in this range and this one has frequency in this range. <coughs> so what Fourier transform does is that uh, it converts uh, it into uh, separate frequencies and then converts it into this frequency domain. There are different softwares uh, through which you can play with your uh, uh, spectrum. So this is original FID, processed FID, or what is it? Spectrum after first Fourier transform. Let's see the original FID, and then you convert this into a Fourier transform. So tomorrow we will talk about the signal to noise ratio. This was all about uh, FID and Fourier transformation and how it uh, helps you in finding out different programs.